I was up until 1 a.m. last night because I couldn't leave the toilet side because the diarrhea was so violent. I feel nauseous. I had a fever, but I don't think I have any more. Hello, I am Lisu, currently in my comfy hotel room in Cusco, Peru. And I am a doctor. But unfortunately, this did not save me from getting sick during my travels. Very badly stomach sick. And for the past three days, I have been going through all the options and possible outcomes of this. But I know that it is a bit easier for me since I have the medical background at hand. So I'm hoping maybe with this video, I could help you feel a bit more confident when you're in this crappy situation and therefore I'm gonna share the worst part of traveling, getting sick. So it is pretty known that doctors are the worst patients and for four months of consecutive travel I have been able to avoid getting these health problems. Four days ago when my stomach started cramping I knew something was different but I just didn't know how bad it would get. So when we take acute diarrhea. There is four subtypes that I've divided into depending on what's causing it. Food poisoning, viral, bacterial and parasitic diarrhea. And it is pretty common that food and water when they're contaminated can cause these stomach problems. But bear with me, I will explain why these four subtypes. At first it might seem that they are pretty similar. There is nausea, vomiting, stomach ache, diarrhea, elevated body temperature. But the cause and the treatment options might vary a little bit. And sometimes there is a doctor needed to help you out with this awful time that you're having. Firstly, food poisoning without the actual infection, but just the toxins in the food that make you sick. It can start pretty fast after eating this contaminated food. It can be only a few hours until it starts. And there might be other people with similar symptoms who ate the same food. And the good thing is it should be self-limiting in one to two days. And it is very common. Secondly, viral diarrhea. This one is a bit more severe because now we get to the infection part. There's a virus creating all these symptoms and therefore it might take a little bit longer than just the food poisoning to kick in and also more than a couple of days, one to three, to resolve. But depending on the person, these all could last a lot longer. So the characteristic with viral diarrhea is that it's usually watery and there still might be other people who have the same symptoms in a short time frame. And even the low-grade fever might accompany this. Thirdly, bacterial diarrhea. This infection might be pretty serious, but it doesn't mean that it always needs antibiotics. To differentiate from viral diarrhea would be that often it, with bacterial diarrhea there's mucus and blood in the stools and the high fever might accompany all this. Fourthly, parasitic diarrhea. This one takes weeks to kick in and it might not be that obvious at first because the watery diarrhea might alternate with the soft greasy stools. The characteristic is that the stool smells very badly and there might even be some parasites in the actual stool. Hint how to find them. They're the white things in the stool that do not belong there. And the tiredness and bloating that can come with a prolonged illness so what to do if you're in this nasty situation and would like to help yourself. The first tip of every diarrhea is to drink. Drink a lot of water with salts because you're losing them while you're vomiting or your stools are loose. You need these electrolytes back and they will make you feel better. There are some drugs that can alleviate some of the symptoms. For example, metoclopramide takes the nausea away. Simeticone works on the gassy stomach and loperamide might stop the diarrhea for some time completely. But they are not crucial to use and loperamide of those three might even be harmful to use and it might prolongate the illness. But let's say you have to get on a plane. What do you do? You want it to stop for some time, then loperamide is your go-to drug. How to tell how severe it is and how bad it is? I might tell you that look out for the low blood pressure or urine amount, but this will not help while you are in this situation. So the red flags that are quite easy to look out for are the confusion and tiredness that are so severe that the person cannot drink themselves anymore. And one more thing is 
if the illness has gone on for so long and it doesn't self-limit, then you might need external help. And if we're talking antibiotics for bacterial diarrhea, then blood in the stools and high fever are the indications that it might not self-limit. So back to the story of what I lived through here in Peru. I'm not gonna tell you the details of what, how and when, but I drank a lot of water. And now my only friend is this lovely electrolyte drink. Slept a lot and ate very little for a couple of days. And then when I actually started feeling a little bit better and could get up from the bed, then I knew that the worst was over. Even sometimes while traveling, you're gonna have to say that your health is more important. But it has failed you. And I hope for you and for me that it doesn't happen anytime soon. So I wish you healthy travels and see you next week. Bye.